Hello everyone, it's Shannon here for Waffle Flower Crafts. In today's video, we are going to create a really pretty fall background and we're going to talk about backgrounds and how to draw attention to your focal point. These are the two new Waffle Flower stamp sets I'll be using today. First on the right here is the Fall Greeting stamp set. There are matching dies for that gorgeous set. And then on the left here we have the Happy Thanksgiving set. I'm going to create a background of leaves and I want my leaves to have a shadow so I'm going to start with my shadow actually. I have a really pretty soft tan here or soft brown. This is Coffee Loves Milk by Waffle Flower. It's a dye ink and I've just grabbed one of the leaves from the Happy Thanksgiving stamp set and I'm just going to repeat stamp this kind of randomly all over this A2 panel of 110 pound white cardstock. I love these leaves from the Happy Thanksgiving stamp set. I've already used them on another card for a fun technique and I'm going to use them a lot today as well. So I just finished stamping the shadow for my leaf background. Now I'm going to use the same leaf stamp and I'm going to use my Misty now because I'm going to ink these uh, these uh, this leaf stamp up several times in different colors and I want to be able to stamp in the same spot multiple times. So I've positioned it slightly offset of the shadow so you can still see a little bit of the tan shadow when I stamp this. And I'm going to stamp this in a Distress Oxide. I'm starting with my light red here which is Barn Door and now I'm moving on to a darker red which is Fired Brick and I'm going to to partially ink the stamp. So I'm not inking the whole leaf, just kind of the edge there. I do that by angling the stamp pad while I ink and that just gets a portion of it. And I'm going to do it one more time just to kind of make that fired brick a little bit darker. And you can see what it does is it creates a nice little gradation over that leaf. I've now repositioned the leaf here and I'm going to stamp another leaf in another pairing of colors. This is my yellow pairing starting with mustard seed. I'm going to clean it up a little bit here. Typically I don't clean in between inking, um, but there was a lot of residual ink still on the ink or on the stamp because it I didn't wasn't able to stamp most of the stamp onto paper. My second color for that uh, yellow pairing was fossilized amber. And again, all my inks are on screen so you can follow along. I'm now moving on to my orange pairing starting with spiced marmalade and then partially inking with ripe persimmon. So these are the orange distress oxide uh, that I'm using for the leaves. Now I have one more pairing here. This is going to be my green leaf. Again, slightly off centering that leaf stamp, positioning it slightly off center of the shadow. Starting with a crushed olive here for my light green. Just going to stamp that. And once I finish stamping that, I will grab my darker shade, which is peeled paint. And again, I don't clean in between for, for pairing. I don't clean in between. So when I stamp a green, I do it in the light and then immediately stamp in the dark. I don't have to worry about cross-contamination of my ink pads because most of that uh, ink was stamped down on to the paper. So there's very little residual ink on the stamp and any little bit of ink, it is a light color. So basically will get kind of absorbed or eaten up by the darker ink pad that I'm using the second time. So I'm just continuing this process here for all the leaves, stamping each one of them. Um, I really think this is pretty, maybe a little time consuming, but I really like the way it looks and it goes pretty fast. The longest part of this is cleaning and then repositioning the stamp. That's the most time consuming part of this background. And uh, it's a lot faster than uh, coloring. <laughs> coloring takes a lot of time. I also love the kind of faux dimension that we get by stamping that shadow. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see because the camera's far away from the panel, but when I'm all done here stamping, I only have a couple more leaves to go, and when I start doing some Copic coloring, or uh, you'll get to actually see that background, those shadow, a little bit better, and hopefully in the finished photos you really get to see. But it just adds that little shadow that we stamped in the very beginning, and by offsetting our colorful leaves, it just creates this really cool kind of dimension, even though it's a completely flat, single-layer panel. So now I'm going to kind of... <laughs> This is going to sound a little counterintuitive, but I'm going to add tons of little dots to kind of fill in this background. And what this actually does is it kind of makes it less busy. It, it kind of tightens everything up in a way, and you're not focusing so much on the individual leaves, but kind of it kind of creates just a more seamless, um, flat background in a way. After I finished all my little Copic dots, I'm now moving on to Copic coloring these images from the Fall Greeting stamp set. 
Uh, I'm actually only going to color the the pumpkin and the birdies here. The the sentiment I'll just leave kind of black and white. I first stamped this in Momento Tuxedo Black onto some 110 pound white cardstock, and the co the Copic markers I'm using are on screen so you can follow along. But my basic process is start with my lightest, then move my medium shade, then my darkest shade, and then I blend back through, blending the transition between my medium and dark, and then my medium and my light. And that just creates a nice gradation over um, it's more so the pumpkins and the birds. The rest of it is pretty um, small. So when it's a pretty small image like the leaves or the acorn here, you can kind of, you don't have to really go back through and blend it out. So once I finished that up, I went ahead and die cut the sentiment out and my little birdies and pumpkin out with the matching dies. I have an A2 top folding card base here that I'm going to adhere my panel to. So I'm going to use some liquid glue. The reason why I you see a grid on the back side of this panel is because I'm recycling or reusing a creative monthly sheet. These are made by Waffle Flower. They're great planner sheets, but this one was slightly had a mark on it so it couldn't be sold. So I'm just recycling these. So now I've turned over my die cuts, my sentiment, and my image, and I'm going to add some foam squares to the back side just to add some dimension. Once I added the foam squares, I'll remove the backing and then I will center them here on this rectangle of vellum and stick them down. Vellum is a really, really great solution for drawing attention to your focal point and kind of deminimizing um, the busyness of a background. So vellum is very useful, really a handy crafter <laughs> kind of tool. I'm going to add some um, glue to the back side of this, hiding that glue right behind where the image is and basically wherever there was a foam square, that's where I added a little dab of glue. And then I will stick that down and center it and that completes my card. I'll hold it to the camera here so hopefully you can get a good look at this fall card. I really love how this card turned out. I loved the background to begin with, but I had a hard time kind of figuring out what to do with it. And then when I combined it with these really pretty images from the fall greetings, I thought it was like a match made in heaven. And the vellum just does a really good job of kind of minimizing the busyness of the background and really drawing your attention to the focal point as well, I think, as all the little dots that I made to kind of fill in the background and kind of, you know, even it out as well. I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video. If you want any more information on the products I use, please visit Waffle Flower and you can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.